Hello and welcome back to Garden Well, Eat Well. It's now getting close to the end of winter and we're so happy about that. We've had more than our fair share of freezing weather and snow. I really wanted to clean up all these gardens at the end of last season. I got through most of them, but winter ended up coming in a little bit too early. So while I was checking on a few things in the garden, I, I came across these. They've just been sitting here, slowly breaking down ever since the fall. So, so I have to ask, can an old forgotten squash left rotting in the garden possibly have any use? Well, let's find out. Last season I grew several types of squash. It was a, a good year and I had a bumper crop, a huge bumper crop. Especially zucchini. There were just tons of them. I'm not sure why these, though, were left out and never brought in, but we're going to find a use for them now. C certainly not for eating. And we're not just going to throw them on the compost pile either. It's Although, we could do that too. What they are still good for is providing us some seed, and we'll be able to plant it this year, even if it's only a few weeks away. So if you forgot to collect any seed earlier, this will give you a good second chance. <laughs> They're just a pile of mush, but we'll gather these up as best we can and get them back to the house. They're just falling apart, they're so far gone. Up to this point, the, the skins have locked in all their moisture and kept it from evaporating and leaking away. All this water is actually juice from the squash. There's no bad smell to it at all, but they're, they're definitely messy. Now you may think that you could collect and clean these seeds the same way as you would with a, a regular mature squash. But since these are well rotted, you, you can't do it the same way. Let me show you first how you would normally clean and save the seed from, from one that is still solid and edible. Here I've been preparing to make some squash soup. It's a great way to use up all those extra zucchinis. Especially if they're overgrown and gotten to be those monster sizes. In fact, I'm doing a whole video on that, so make sure to check that out later. To extract the seeds, you want to do it in a way that you get as many as you can, but without damaging them. So don't slice it clean through straight down the middle. This is what I mean. It's, I've sliced many of the seeds in half now, and I'm going to have to waste a lot of time and separate those out. So let's try to cut them in a better way, so we're, we're not making extra work for ourselves. We can do that if we only make shallow cuts and stay away from the center of the squash. Sometimes if the skin is too tough, it, it helps to first peel it. At least do the area that you need to cut through. Using just the tip of the knife, cut into the skin and just a little into the flesh. Carefully run it down the length and do this on each side. Then, pushing with your thumbs, gently pry the squash apart. When you split it this way, you won't be ruining any of the seeds. Then, using a, a spoon or an ice cream scoop, scrape them out along with any pulp and flesh that they're still attached to. We'll mix all this with water and let it soak for four to five days at room temperature. When you leave them like this, the seeds and pulp go through a, a fermentation process. It's, it's so easy, there's nothing to do except just let them sit. This will remove the slippery and slimy coating on the outside of the seeds and also releases them from the pulp. And then, once the fermentation is done, it's just a matter of pouring off the waste. And you do that by just running them through a, a few rinses with clean water. A real neat trick is when you stir the seeds around and wait for a few seconds, the good ones will settle on the bottom and then you're safe to just pour off as much of the fermented pulp as possible. Any seeds that are not viable, they'll be floating, so those can easily be poured off as well. Here's a good close-up showing exactly how they separate. Go through this a few times. Add more water, stir them around, and, and keep rinsing them until the water runs clear. At that point, the seeds will be pretty clean, and the last step is just to strain them and dry them out. So that's the method that you would normally do for a good mature squash. But for a squash that's rotted out, well, nature has actually done a lot of that work already. 
By sitting in the sun throughout the fall and into the early winter, the, the squash is broken down. Inside, as, as we saw, the flesh is all soft and watery and mushy. It's gone through a natural fermentation all by itself. In fact, it's probably fermented too long. Collecting the seed this time couldn't get easier. There's still little pulp to contend with, but the seeds are all loose. And although it may not look too appealing, all you have to do is scoop them out. Since they've been processed naturally, all that slipperiness is gone. We still want to put them in water, but this time it's just to quickly clean them, not to soak like we did last time. We don't want them to sit in water for too long, and I'll show you why in a second. We'll do the same method of rinsing with fresh water to clean the seed, but as you can see, a lot more of them are floating this time. Since these were affected by such a long fermentation, they, they can't be used for planting and they all need to be poured off. So with what's left, you may think that we have tons of healthy seed that will do very well in the garden. But unfortunately, looking closely, the husk has split on some of them. It sort of looks like they've already germinated. But really, they haven't. They, these seeds that have split, well, they've actually drowned. By sitting so long in the fermented juices inside the squash, they've absorbed too much moisture and now, now we can't use them. This is why we didn't want them exposed to any more water. So if you didn't know when just took the seeds from the rotted squash and put them through another fermentation, you'd probably kill off most of the remaining good seed. Not a good idea. So separate those seeds that have burst their shells and we'll, we'll get rid of those. The rest, though, should still be good. This is probably why you find so many seeds in a squash, because in nature, any of those seeds just will not make it. By producing so many, it's just nature's way to ensure at least a few plants survive and grow to maturity. The last step is to dry them, and dry them fully so they can be stored and planted later. Right now, they're, they're just saturated. That's making them heavy, and they also have a darker appearance. I find the fastest way is to spread them out on newspaper and leave them in the open, like on a countertop. You need the air to circulate around the seeds to help with the evaporation. And the paper, that can help to draw out and wick away the moisture from underneath the seed. I like leaving them on the counter because that gives me a chance to move the seeds around every time I walk by. They'll dry much quicker when you turn them at least a few times a day, and the more you do it, the better. Depending on the temperature and humidity, the seeds may take up to a week to completely dry. They may stick to the paper a bit, but really that's not a problem. They, they come off quite easily. And after losing all their moisture, they're much lighter in weight, they're brighter, and they're completely loose. We can store them away now, and I always use an envelope for that. Paper is the best choice because it's porous. The seeds can still breathe and continue drying in case they have any dampness left in them. Just to be sure, I wanted to see just how well they would germinate. <laughs> I got excellent results, close to 100%. I'll be able to use this seed later in the spring, but these will also store well and be good to use over the next five years. I use this technique for cucumbers, melons, and tomatoes too. No matter what time of year it is, whenever you find these rotting in the garden, you'll be able to get some seed from them. Just because they're past their prime or left unpicked at, at the end of the season, they can still serve a purpose. Thanks again for watching and see you next time on Garden Well, Eat Well.